Hello and a very, very warm welcome to you as always. My name is Emery. If you've not, not met me before, um, just to give you a little heads up, I'll give you a couple of minutes to find things if you want to find anything tonight. Because I'm going to suggest, just have a bit of fun tonight actually. So if you've got something like a Pilates ball, so a little bit squashy if you've got one, that would be good. If you don't, a tennis ball is a great alternative. We're going to do a little bit of throwing and catching, so just um, mind anything, any breaker balls, okay? We'll just be gentle. I just thought it might be some fun, so you might have something uh, not too dangerous that you can throw and catch. Um, and if you would like to, at the end, I'm planning to do a hamstring stretch, which will involve something like a belt or a band, anything like that. You don't need either of those items, so don't panic if you don't have them. I just thought it might be a bit of fun. Um, as always, you may or may not want to have a um, yoga block, something like that, for your head and your mat or whatever soft surface you're planning to do your Pilates with me tonight on. So just a little heads up, um, if you need to run up and grab anything, go grab it now. We'll just do a little bit of breathing to calm down, bring ourselves into the room and just don't panic. If you don't have it, we'll make it work, okay? So just starting as we always do in our neutral position. We're going to do some nice box breathing together. So when you're ready, we're going to breathe in two, three, four, and hold. Three, four, breathe out. Two, three, four, and hold. Two, three, four, in. Two, three, four, hold. Two, three, four and out, two, three, four and hold, two, three, four, in, three, four and hold, two, three, four, breathe out, two, three, four and hold, two, just a couple more with me, in, three, four, hold, two, three, four, breathe out, two, three, four, and hold, one more to finish, and in, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, breathe out, two, three, four, and hold, two, three, four, awesome. Well, thank you for joining me again tonight. As always, if you find anything I do tonight twingy, painful, uncomfortable, just don't do it. Don't do it. I'll give you plenty of alternatives or take a break if you need to, have a stretch, uh, take a rest out, whatever you need to do. Hopefully, you're going to feel fantastic at the end of it, feel like you've worked, feel like you've stretched, feel brilliant. But please don't hurt yourself. Keep yourself safe, guys. Don't break anything, all those good things. Now, to start with, if you wish to, we're going to get our neutral position, but if you do have something like a tennis ball, and pop it under your foot. This is an alternative, so we're just gonna normally rock forwards and backwards to our feet, which can be really nice, just opening out the feet. Instead, if you have a tennis ball and you would like to, just roll it, give yourself a little massage underneath the feet. Okay, so aiming roughly to go from the heel and out to each toe in turns. So it's just a really comfortable, massage kind of roll, right? Don't need to put necessarily pressure, it's just a bit of fun. You might find the ball flings off across the room, that's not a problem, go grab it. Try not to break anything, stand and stuff, okay? But we're just having a little bit of a foot massage. Alternatively, you can be going up onto the heels and onto the toes as we normally would. I just thought it'd be a nice change. Okay, and from here, next time it comes under your heel, if you put your toes and the front of your foot down, you can just press down onto it at the back. So just pressing down, feeling the pressure under your heel and allowing your foot to expand. So the front of the foot just expanding nicely. Okay, we're going to switch sides. So again, if you want to just be rocking forwards and backwards, by all means, do that. Oh, it's a bit of a way to go sometimes, isn't it? So that's why I'm hoping you've maybe got one or two pieces of the kit tonight. But it's not a drama, is it? Not a drama. I do hope you have had a lovely old day today. Enjoying it, warming up a little bit. Always good, isn't it? Fantastic. Just going forwards and back. Oh, my ball nearly 
rolled off then. <laughs> and under the heel. And again, I'm just going to put it right under the heel and just press down. So just getting a little bit of pressure. It's not impossible that you might squash your tennis ball doing this. If so, apologies. Apologies, apologies. They're not super expensive, so hopefully it's not the end of the world if we do. As long as it's not the dog's favourite toy, then it'll be so good. Okay, so just pressing down and release that there. So it's just an option. I'm going to get it out of the way so I don't fall over it. But the feet now should feel a little bit open. And we'll just walk through the feet to make sure that we've warmed up the ankles and let them come to settle so the feet and ankles are directly underneath the pointy bits of our hips at the front. Moving up through the body, the knees are nice and soft. So avoiding locking them out. Don't need to be massively bent, just a little soft bend in them. Coming up all the way to the pelvis. So imagine that bowl of water. We are tucking under, tucking over. Getting that movement into the lower part of the spine. Just rolling and rolling. Allowing those vertebrae to get that expansion and contraction in the lower part of the spine. So you're allowing the discs in between the vertebrae, the bones have got some discs in between them, the intervertebral discs. It's just squashing the fluid that lives inside them, squashing it round, allowing it to get in there, warming it up nicely. Just making it a little bit less viscous, a little bit more runny, so you've got that good bit of movement in that area. And allowing that to come and settle so you've got a neutral curve at the lower part of the spine so you've got almost just a little little dip at the bottom okay now imagine that pulling down the bottom of the tailbone drawing up all through the top of the head so you're stretching stretching being tall I was never going to be a tall person it's the best I'll ever do so drawing up and we're going to have the ribs directly over the hips let's take those shoulders forwards up back ease them down the back through the shoulder blades easing down towards the back pockets. The hands will be opening out to either to the front or into the sides. The ears are a long way from those shoulders. You've got a lovely long neck looking forwards, chin pointing forwards. We've got this wonderful, fabulous, long neutral position available to us. Fantastic. Okay, let's think about our breathing now. So when you're ready, breathe in full and wide and breathe out. Now this might be the start of your day if you're watching it in the morning. This might be the end of your day as it is for me. Let's just make it a really good part of our day. Something to look forward to. Full and wide, the rib cage opening and closing. Contraction. Imagine that belt around the pelvis, so 10 notches on that belt, just around the hips. When you're ready, on your next full and wide breath, then breathe in. Draw that belt tight, so this is really ugh, feeling that tension in the lower part of kind of the spine and the hips, and release. Just release. Okay, when you're ready, breathe in. Go up to the fifth notch of the belt, so it's slightly more gentle tightening. You can still feel it down in those creases of the legs. Just under your fingertips, a couple of inches in from your hip bones and release. Okay. When you're ready on the next one, my breath in, we'll go to that 30% contraction, third notch on the belt. So just breathing in, gentle tightening. Okay, we're breathing through it. Lovely. So we've got our fantastic neutral position. We're going to warm up, make sure all of, all of our joints are ready, our muscles are ready. So we're going to start tonight with some shoulder rolls. So we'll start just leading with the shoulders. Now again, in that analogy I had last week of stirring porridge, imagine it's these shoulders that are slowly going through that porridge. I did get a wonderful porridge recipe. Thank you very much. The person that sent me that, as I was rather excited about it. So top recommendation from someone was a banana, cinnamon and fig, which actually sounded awesome. So I'm gonna to have to try that one. So thank you for the porridge recipes. Always happy to hear those. Okay, look at it with the arms. Up and round. Oh, really stretch out those fingertips nice and high. Take them wide. I mean, like, yeah, any more porridge recipes, send them away. Love a bit of porridge. Can't go wrong with it. Mmm. Big, nice, long stretch movement. Still easing those shoulder blades. 
down at the back. So you don't need to bring the shoulders all the way up, up to here, just draw them down and keep it moving around. Fantastic. Lovely. And we're going to move this into an arm raise at the front, just coming up onto our toes. So we're getting a little bit of movement into our ankles and calves. I think we did some calf balances last week, I have a feeling. So it's just again working those muscles at the bottom of the legs. Knees are still soft and it's just a gentle relaxed movement. So stretching out of the hands, you can warm up the hands, the wrists, almost wafting and waving. Fantastic. Now this is a move we don't often do standing but I wanted to show you because I think it's a really good move to think about the strength of the muscles in the back. It's that chicken wings movement. We do do it sometimes lying on our back. I'm planning to do it later on tonight. So just to give you those cues now, imagine your arms go up and high and imagine grabbing on. Now as I said I've got a wonderful chin up bar there so it's fantastic to think about. You've got a bar, grab onto it and draw wide and down and those elbows come towards the waist and back up. It's probably easier for you to see it from this angle because usually when I teach this and I'm on my back maybe the angle isn't quite so clear but I'm working my back. There's no weight. I'm not holding on to weight but imagine I've got elastic band on the ceiling. I'm drawing it down. Okay maybe one day I'll get my bands out and actually show you with the bands exactly what I mean. So drawing it down, elbows down to the waist and then reaching back up and it's really working those muscles down the side of the back. So you get a lovely bit of tension down the sides of the back, kind of underneath your armpits, down all the way down towards your waist, that kind of area around the back of the ribs. And those muscles are called your lats. And they look awesome when they're lovely and toned and strong. Wonderful. Okay. And from here, we're just gonna do some, imagine that we're doing almost some curls, some ab curls, but we're doing it standing. So just bringing fingertips towards the temples, I'm gonna take the elbow across. So I'm getting a little bit of rotation and a little bit of flexion into the spine. Now, just be mindful of how your spine is feeling. Okay, if this is a little bit twingy for any reason or uncomfortable, you can either just go down and up down and up or just to get rotation in just with the rotation but if you want to you can take that diagonal move so you're working into the abs as you're moving and the obliques so these muscles at the side of the waist the obliques so a bit of a change so you're kind of looking down to the corner as you go the neck stays in line with kind of the top of the chest the sternum and breastbone okay and release that there. We're going to do some arcing. So I'll show you this one from the side. From our neutral position, arcing, we're going to start standing up nice and tall when you're ready. Just tilt the chin and slump. Just slump, breathing out there. Breathing in, opening up, looking up, open the chest. And back to the beginning. Slump, don't breathe out. Breathe in as you look up. And so you'll notice I'm kind of slumping forwards. My knees are just gently, oh, a little bit of bend in them. And then opening up and out. And you can come up onto your toes again if you wish, optionally. So up and down. And up. And from here, instead of just the arc, let's just do a small roll down. Just a small one, halfway maybe. And then rolling back up. All the way to neutral. Tilt the chin, roll it down. Maybe halfway, three quarters way. Just going to do a couple of these. We'll do a few more in a minute. But just making sure we've got that really nice flexion of the spine. So coming a little bit lower each time. Maybe going a bit lower this time again. Okay. Oh, can you get down to your toes? Maybe, maybe not. Can you usually? If you usually can, get down that way. If not, get down to the bottom, you'll move. You can keep the knees just gently soft. I tend to keep mine just a little bit soft. Just to be a little bit gentle on the hamstrings. On the way down. Oh, there we go, lovely. And relax it there. We're gonna swing the arms around. So just swinging, just swinging, just swinging. Now let the feet release so that you're coming up onto the opposite toe. It's just a calm, relaxing. Gentle, gentle, gentle rotation and movement. And you can have kind of a little bend at the 
elbow at the end of the move. So you're almost wrapping your arms around your waist. Fantastic. Wonderful. 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 What's next? What's next? Oh, yes. We're doing a little move called a TikTok. So standing back in the neutral, just going to take the leg out to the side and in. So you're getting that side kind of side flexion of the leg. Now, if you wish to, you get flexion through the spine by taking the arms wide and just reaching down towards that leg. Okay. Oh, getting some movement in there. Wonderful. And releasing that. We're going to come up and do a calf raise. So just a few. This is not our balance. Don't peek too soon. Not our balance. Just a few up and down. Okay. And just a few. We're going to do a little knee raise in front and then a kick towards the bottom behind. So showing you from the side. Knee raise in front, kick to the bottom behind, just two or three on each side, just to make sure the hips, knees, all nice and warm. Oh, <laughs> this isn't the balance either. I know. Got some fun with this one tonight. Right, last one, last one. Right, if you have something like a tennis ball, something like a party ball, grab it now. Because we're going to do our balance, but it's a bit of a brain, brain teaser balance. So make sure you're not under something you're going to smash. If you've got glass light fittings, move away from the light fittings or glass vases, anything like that. I'm relatively safe here. I won't wang it at the mirror, but we'll be all right. Okay, if and when you're ready, just come up onto one leg. All I'm going to get you to do is just throw and catch. So you've got all the stuff of the balance. <laughs> Wibbling on a wobbling, you won't be able to look at me, and you can see I'm wobbling all over the place too. So that's all good. Right, you can go side to side, you can do up and down. If you don't have a ball, you can just bring the arms up and down. So I'm getting you to move in the balance. Okay, so you've got some choices here. But you can treat it as like a little brain teaser game. Can you get the balance? along with the coordination. Now, as I said, don't throw it near anything dangerous. Unfortunately, don't have any lights too close to me, so that's all good. Please be mindful if you're doing this with family and friends in the room. Obviously not friends, we don't have friends anymore at home, do we? If you're doing it with family at home, or your household members, uh, give yourself enough space. <laughs> We're not going to bash into each other. If you drop it, don't worry. Just grab it again, it's fine. No one can see you, it's fine. It's not my problem, you see? If I drop it, everyone watches me, brilliant. Okay, release. You really feel that on the standing leg actually, because it's even more wobbly than it usually is. So I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. So just bring that knee up, it doesn't need to be high, you might just wanna have the foot just off the floor. And if you need to touch down, touch down, but when you're ready. Oh. I think this isn't as good this side, is it? I just thought this might be a bit of fun. So you don't, it doesn't have to be a tennis ball. Anything kind of soft will do, won't it? Maybe if you have one of those, um, oh, be careful actually. I was thinking if you have one of those prickly massage balls, but you could take your eye out of that, couldn't you? Don't do that. Uh, but a Pilates ball, you could do it two-handed. Football, small cushion, don't know. TV remote, don't break it. Maybe you've got it. Just a few. So I'm intending, I'm trying to keep my knee forward. Oh my goodness, that was a tricky one. But then I'm finding sneaking back and I'm not looking. Right, three, two, one, boom! Yes, you can put the ball down. Next balance does not involve a ball. Okay, I promise. That's fun though, wasn't it? Okay, I'm going to go back to our neutral position. This time, if you can, I'm just going to get you to some more leg. Now I'm going to do it by just having my foot kind of tucked in towards the calf. It doesn't need to be particularly high. Already wobbling, not a good sign. We're going to do some bow and arrow with our arms. So in this position, arms go forward, draw the arm back, open out, and sweep it down. Now depending on how your balance normally is, keep that standing leg soft. This may feel alright for now. Okay. Just that core's engaged. Okay, standing legs soft, still standing up nice and tall, opening out through the chest, 
getting that movement and rotation through the shoulders. If this is feeling good, you like a bit more of a challenge, watch the hand that's moving. And sweep it down so your head is moving with it. So sweep it down. Oh my goodness, that's already hard. Okay. And if that's feeling really good, I salute you first of all, well done. Uh, but if it is and you'd like to try it, try it with your eyes closed. Safety first. If there's anything you're going to fall into, the crack head open, please don't. Okay, but if you're just near like a bed or something you'll fall on, close your eyes, see if you can have a go. So you've lost all of that visual cue, that visual information. Oh my goodness, that was tricky. That was tricky, but good fun. Okay, so you might be on any one of those options. Staying, looking at your stationary point in front watching the hand, or having a go a couple of times with the eyes closed. Oh, you can see the difference. Right, and release it there. Oh, that was good, that was a good one. <laughs> okay, got the other side, oh no. Oh, it's gonna be fine, it's gonna be fine. Okay, it's starting like nice and soft. <laughs> got the giggles, this isn't very well, is it? Arms in front. And we'll do that bow and arrow on the other side. So you should switch legs. I'm tending to stand for balance on the leg with the arm that is not moving, okay? I mean, if you flipped it around, why not? I don't know if you'll find it a bit trippier in the rotation of the arm, but maybe it's a bit, a bit of a different feel. I'm not really worried. We're just trying to do it for our balance, aren't we? So it's less about the movement of the arms, more about moving our center of gravity and responding to that movement as your arm is a long arm position, going all the way from the front, all the way down to the back. Okay, should we try looking at the hands? Should we give it a go? Let's do it. If you wobble and fall out of it, don't panic. Just have another go, just have another go. Oh, I'm going. Right, here we go. High pressure, this is high pressure situation. Right. I've had to go that day, I try it with my eyes closed. Come on, let's give it a go. You've got to be in it to win it, haven't you? Right, close eyes. Oh my goodness, you can feel the weight moving. Keeping that standing leg soft. Oh, that's so hard, that's so hard. Okay, we're going to do three more, okay, when you're ready. So choose what you want to do, I'm going to close my eyes. Three. Two. Can we do one more, one more, one more? Yes. Awesome. I hope you enjoyed those. They were a bit of fun tonight, actually, a bit different. I hope you didn't damage yourself or anyone around you or anything. Okay. Well done. <laughs> okay. I'm going to roll down. Have you come to this end of the mat? So the foot end of the mat tonight, I'm going to get my head at that end tonight. I like it's all too much, a bit weird. I get far too close to my face to the mirror on this side. So starting here, getting back into that neutral position, standing up nice and tall, gentle curve in the lower part of the back. When you're ready, tilt the chin, we're just going to start the roll down. So coming halfway down and rolling back up. That was quite fun, that was a bit different. Like that. Just do that roll down, so you're allowing the vertebrae just to peel away. If you were standing against a wall, it's that sensation of peeling the vertebrae away, coming back to the neutral position at the top, standing nice and tall, tilt the chin, feel the spine. And gradually increasing the size of the move. Peel it down, peel it down. Slowly increasing, and you're restacking those vertebrae on the way back up. Tilt the chin, and just, if you need to, slow it right down, so it feels like the cog just turning, 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 turning. Let the arms hang before you come back up. So the head hangs over, the last thing to come up is the chin. Okay, let's get down to the bottom of our move. So let the head hang heavy, let the arms hang heavy, let the fingers hang heavy. If you wish to, you can hang on to the elbows with the hands and just gently rock side to side. So a bit of a rag doll, but just allowing the upper body to remain heavy. It's 
so that you can get some length through the spine, the top of the head, just almost got a weight on top of it, drawing the spine long. Okay, and from here, take your hands down, we're just going to walk the hands forwards. Just until we get into a down dog from here, which will be quite nice. Take the hips nice and high, and we're just going to walk the heels into the floor. So you're walking the dog, the hips are high, the head is between the arms, my gaze is kind of looking down towards my ankles, chest pushing down, forwards, getting a stretch through the shoulders, lovely stretch down the back of the calves, and just hold it there, ease the heels down towards the mat. It's not about getting the heels to hit, I don't think mine ever will, which is a little bit sad, but never mind. Uh, you can keep the knees soft if you'd like to. We are pushing the chest forwards and down, getting a stretch through the shoulders, stretch down the calves and the hamstrings. Okay, and release it there. So just bend at the knees, we'll come down through all fours. We're gonna end up down, we're gonna do some swan dives. We're gonna end up on our tummies. I will take my glasses off before they fall off. Okay, but ending up down onto the floor. So getting our neutral position, from here, so the elbows wide of the shoulders, the hands, the palms kind of down onto the ground. You're almost making a capital E shape with your arms and your head. Let your toes come together, heels flop out to the side, gently tuck the hips under. If that's quite uncomfortable on your hip region, by all means, shove like a soft cushion, something like that, or a rolled up towel, just underneath to soften up that area if you need to. That's all okay. Okay, so we've got our neutral position, the spine is long, everything is pretty chilled and relaxed. Okay, let's do our full of my breathing. When you're ready, on your next breath in, we're just going to bring the head gently up, using those muscles of the upper back and bringing it back down as you breathe out. Breathe in to lift, out to lower. So at the moment, I'm just using the muscles of the back, not pressing into the arms at all. The arms are just kind of cogging themselves. They're not applying any force. If this is feeling good and you'd like to, next time you're up, just press into the forearms. You get a little bit more height. So release the forearms, then release the back. When you're ready, squeeze into the back, squeeze into the forearms. If this is going well, you feel comfy, you'd like to move it up an arch. Okay, back, forearms, into hands. We've got that little bit extra space to push the chest up and forwards. But it's always engaging from the upper back, okay? The focus in the first instance is that straight into the upper back. We're then moving through to kind of the flexibility of the hyperextension through the spine. But if that doesn't feel great, it's not going to feel like a brilliant move for everybody. Not everybody's spine likes this. So if you want to keep it low, keep it low, it's fine. If you just want to stick with that small extension, that's all good. Okay, and now we're going to bring the legs in if you would wish to. Next time you come down, when you're down, engage the glutes, legs along, and just raise the upper body. So it turns into something a bit akin to the bottom of a rocking horse. So as the front comes down, the back goes up. Okay, and the legs remain long, so you're not kind of pointing the toes and tightening. It's not about that. Okay, it's about the strength through the glutes. The feet are actually reasonably floppy, and the knees, whilst they're not bending, they're also not locked out. Okay, so just a, set, a soft softness into the knees, you're working all the way down the back, all the way through to the glutes. Sweet! Wonderful. Now, if you find you'd rather just do the top off or the bottom off, stay with it. There is no need to make this move particularly big if it doesn't feel great to do so. It may, if you wish to, if you find it a little bit funny on the lower back, it may help you to have your feet slightly wider apart. But again, if, if that's not feeling great on the lower back, leave that legs, don't panic. There is no move in any exercise or any part of Pilates or life that is so important that you have to induce yourself to do it. There's always something alternative where you can take a break through it and wait for the next one. Okay, we'll just do one more. Okay. And relax. 
relax, relax, and just, how about we just have a wobble like a jelly, so lying on the floor, just allow the hips, the shoulders, the arms just to wobble, I'm lying on my cheek, it's a bit more comfortable on my head, but just relax, allow the body just to move through that position nice and comfortably, okay, wonderful, we're going to come up to all fours, so get your hands under your shoulders, tighten into the core, press, coming up to all fours, so we're going to do some leg pull prone. So leg pull on your front, aka a bit of a plank. Okay. <laughs> I just think it's a bit of a con if you say leg pull and people don't know what you mean. It's a bit like a plank, isn't it? Right. <laughs> Let's get that neutral position. Oh, we're getting together. All right, knees under hips, feet directly behind. We're going to start first of all to get that spine in a really lovely position. So let's just allow the spine, the lower part of the spine, to arch up arch down, so it's kind of like cat-cow but focused on the lower part of the spine. So you're getting that movement again into those lower vertebrae, moving through comfortably. Okay, and coming to let that settle so that you've got a neutral curve in the lower part of the back, again drawing down all the way through the tailbone, all the way up through the top of the head and just a natural curve into the back. Let's get our hands in that fantastic position I like to work, work you through. So hands, kind of the wrists really underneath the shoulders. They will be wider therefore than your knees unless you have very narrow shoulders and wide hips. But generally speaking, they'll be wider than your knees. Okay, so you're gonna imagine you're screwing those hands into the floor. So the fingers still, middle finger pointing directly over the head, but you're imagining screwing the hands in the inner crease pointing up above your head to draw the shoulder blades down the back. You should have a really solid, comfy position to start from here. Right, where we're going to work from, we'll get our full and wide breathing. Breathe in, pop on that hipster belt, and as you breathe out, just want you to extend one leg, extend the other leg, and then bring them back in, bring them back in. So what I'm thinking about here is keeping my back absolutely solid. So as I extend, I'm getting my body into a really nice straight line. Still looking down, there's no need to look at me unless you're just having a quick form check, but then look down towards the floor so that your neck is in a really long, fantastic position. Okay, so this is gently building up. If it's too much to take both knees up, you could, Walk the knee back, walk the knee back to half plank. And then walk it in, walk it in. But if it's comfy, extend to the toes. Okay, if this is feeling good, when you extend out, just hold it here and ease those heels back. So get a nice stretch down the cars and the Achilles tendons. Okay, hold that position and bring it in. So bring it out, bring it out. Ease those heels back, long position. Keeping it strong, shoulders feeling great, bring it down. Now we have spoken about it before, and it's absolutely true again, if your wrists aren't the best, there's a few alternatives here. You can come up onto your fists, like so. Because my wrists don't always like moves like this. You could, if you have uh, something like um, a book or something, you can slip under your hand, that is another option. So I'll just show you using a yoga block, that works for me. If you get your hand kind of supported but over the side, you can support the wrist in that way. Also having a hand over something like a dumbbell, a handle of a dumbbell can be awesome. Do that all the time, dumbbell, kettlebell, that kind of thing. Anything like that if your wrists aren't feeling the best of this move. If your shoulders aren't the best, you kind of have an option to go down. And that might feel a little bit different on your shoulders. So in this time, it's harder to tuck your knees under. So it's more a lift, lift, down, down. Okay. Or again, you might just want to sit this one out, do some cat-cow, which might be a little bit more gentle on the shoulders or the wrists, if needs be. Or pop back to child's pose. If you want to take this as a stretch, by all means do so. If this is feeling good, you'd like to try it. Next time along, I'm just going to lift one heel and down, switch sides and down and bring it back in. So we're just going to do three more sets, that's all, three more sets. So if you want to lift, lift, bring it back in. 
You may still be wanting to just keep the move a bit more simple without the lifts. You might want to do it just with that pushing the weight back over the heels. Okay, last one, last one I promise. Okay, bring it in. Drop the hips back, we're going to pop into child's pose. If you want to, you can take the knees wide before you pop in and just allow the body to rest down. Rest down, chest down towards the floor. You can have the arms over the head if you wish. I'm going to stretch and try and draw the arms back in towards the body. That will give you a lovely stretch down the lats we were talking about earlier. Otherwise, you can have your hands towards your feet. You might find it comfier to have your knees together. Loads of different choices, loads of different options. Just enjoy this wonderful stretch. So we're releasing here. The aim is to get your bum down towards your feet, really. Get that lower back nice and stretched in this position. Fantastic. So hopefully you're feeling re refreshed, rejuvenated, ready for action. Okay. So coming up onto our next move, we're going to get my head pushed and we're going to come over onto our side to do a combination of chalk circles with a clown. Okay, so <laughs> to get our gel free card, if you're not the biggest fan of clowns or of chalk circles, you can just stick with one. But if you like them both, by all means, have a crack at both. Just move a bit closer because I want to give my arm enough space. So coming into this sideline position, knees directly in front of hips and down towards the ankle. So 90 degrees, 90 degrees, I'm going to push that top hip away in a nice gap just underneath the waist. So this is our starting position. In chalk circles, your hands are kind of stacked on top of each other, which is why it's quite nice to have a head pad or cushion. If you don't have one, you can lie on your bottom arm, it's not a big drama. But if you do have a cushion, it can just feel a little bit comfier. Relax. <laughs> Keep breathing. I don't know why I feel really that breath tonight. And relax. Okay. When you're ready, the spine is long. You're going to push that hip away to keep that spine in a nice straight line. So keeping that gap underneath. When you're ready. Breathe in. Switch on the core. And as you breathe out, start that sweeping round. Now, as you sweep round, allow the body to open. So you're going to what you might wish to, watch the fingertips after they've gone past. So you're watching them go out and that allows the body to open up. So my suggestion to you, and it is but a suggestion, is after three chalk circles, you've swept the arm around, we're going to go for three clams. So when you're ready, squeeze and release. We're opening this leg. Knees coming apart, and then we're back to the beginning, three chalk circles. So, take out of this what you need to tonight. If actually what you need is a really super good stretch for the shoulders, for the chest, around the upper body, that twisting of the spine, stick with the chalk circles, it's all good. Okay? If what you really think you perhaps would want to focus on tonight instead is a little bit of strength, a little bit of lower body work, you can do more of the clam. So it's purely kind of optional. What I want you to think about in both moves is keeping that top hip pushed away, keeping the spine nice and long, and getting the most out of the move you're choosing to do, or the combination, as I'm doing. Obviously, never trust me to be counting properly, so you can <laughs> copy me and assume the counting will just all come out in the wash, or you can keep counting yourself. You're ready to squeeze, release, squeeze. So this is the time I'm just double, double checking that gap under my waist. It's a bit easier when my arms aren't moving. Okay, this time, just because I like to hold it open, I'm gonna hold this one open just a little bit longer. Really allow that twist and that stretch, maintaining that gap underneath the waist, looking up either towards the ceiling, maybe looking back towards the back arm really enjoying that stretch and when I'm ready just bringing the arm back down round. Oh, I, I do like this music actually, this is one of my favourite Pilates ones. All music requests are appreciated. Right, 
So I'm gonna go back onto those palm legs. Squeeze and release. Again, just have a quick check that the spine is still long. Do one more set. So one more set of arms, one more set of legs. And if you ever need to modify the chart circles, maybe the top of your shoulder movement doesn't feel so good, maybe you can't get it all the way back, modify it as you need to, okay? Make it feel comfortable. Make it challenge, but nothing twingy, nothing painful, okay? Squeeze, release. Two. And three. Fantastic. It was a good one. It was a good one, right? I think we're going to roll over onto our backs now. So I'm going to get rid of my head cushion. If you do usually use one on your back, by all means, pop one underneath your head. We're going to start on our backs doing the hundred. So the hundred is one of the ones where we have our legs lifted. But let's start with our neutral position. Get your feet together, ankles out, toes out. So you Charlie Chaplin your feet. Ankles, knees, and hips all nicely aligned. Okay, we're going to get that gap into our lower back comfortable. So let's really rock through the pelvis. We haven't done started on our back usually. We like to start in this position, don't we? After we've had a warm up, roll down, get a little bit of movement on our back. Well, let's fit it in in the middle tonight. Bit of a change. Okay, so rolling, really flattening the back towards the floor, arching that lower back up towards the ceiling. Gradually reducing the size of the move, letting it come to settle roughly in the middle. Okay. From here, the ribs are relaxed down, the shoulders, chest relaxed down, all is nice and open. Okay, the head is comfortable, there's a small gap under the neck, the chin is up towards the ceiling again if you need the head cushion by all means do so. Let's go for that full of my breathing. Okay, when you're ready, breathe in, switch on the core, and as you breathe out, float one leg up towards the ceiling. So this is our starting position, this is our most straightforward version of this move. One leg raised, and you've still got some weight on the remaining leg on the floor. The knee is directly over the hip. If you need to, you can just pop your hand there just to stop it from sneaking over to your waist. Okay, you want to keep that knee above the hip, but is relaxed and floppy. So if this is feeling good, where we're going to move from here is we're going to add the arms in at this stage, okay? So when you're ready, we've got the leg raise, going to take the arms up and over, and it's that chicken wings move. So draw the elbows down, reach them back up, and over, okay? And if you're feeling comfy, you can switch legs there. We'll do the same thing. So we'll do a couple like this, where the leg remains down. One leg down, one leg up. So you have a little scissor in the middle and chicken wings at the top. Now, if this is all feeling comfy, you're feeling quite good with this, the leg that's down, just almost keep it up. So it's that one where we're trying to sneak a piece of paper out underneath the foot, the core is kicked in because actually I'm almost holding up both legs. Okay, but I'm maintaining the gap underneath the lower part of the spine, working the lats as well because I'm trying to use that chicken wings as a move where I'm really pulling, 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 pulling. Okay, and if this is still feeling good, you're all nice and comfy, the world is good, and the next one, both legs up. And we'll go up, draw it down. So I'm gonna take a little pattern where it's one leg down with the arms. And then switch sides. The shoulder blades are still actually still drawn down the back. So whilst the arms go over the head, the shoulder blades are still easing towards the back pockets. So that's the other side, and I'm gonna go for both legs. You've got a few options here. You might not have those arms involved. And if you need to take a break at any time, by all means do so. So one leg. Squeeze, release. Down. And if you, you might be at a different speed to me as well. There's no, no magic speed really. I'd rather you weren't rush, rush, rushing. But you might want to slow it all down. Both legs. Okay, and we're going to take it one more through. So still keeping that tummy under control. That hips, the belt are still on. 
The gap under the back is controlled. If you're finding that you're overarching or flattening out there, you need to take a break by all means do. Maybe you can just take the legs down, just do the last set with the arms. Last one. on your feet, do you? What's the bottom of your feet? Well, the bottom of your feet. Put them together. <laughs> it's not your palms, that doesn't make any sense. Uh, feet together, knees flop out to the side. And you can just, like we did with Ragdoll earlier, just hold the elbow with the opposite hand and stretch it there. So it's a little butterfly stretch here. I still don't know what the bottom of your foot's called. Maybe the mental blank. Answer on a postcard, please, if anybody knows what that's called. I think I probably should as an adult. I'll ask one of my children later, I'm sure they know. Soul, the soul of your foot. There you go. Got a winner. <laughs> it's a worry, isn't it? Okay. I'm relaxing here. Now we're going to do a little bit of shoulder bridging. If you did have a ball or a cushion and you were mucking about with it earlier, or a Pilates ball, I'm just going to encourage you now. Grab that now. Okay, we're going to pop it between our knees. It's going to be a shoulder bridge, so if you had a cushion under your head, get rid of it now. You don't have to have something in between your knees. I just want it to use to use it as a reminder of how what distance to keep your knees apart and to have that gentle tension in between your thighs, just holding that leg position. So that in a shoulder bridge, sometimes temptation is to let the flops. Uh, legs flop out or flop in towards each other. This just holds a position. So feet closer in towards the hips and ankles, knees and feet are as in line as they sensibly can be given you've got a cushion between your knees or something similar. Pilates ball's great. You just want to rock through the pelvis to get that neutral spine at the bottom. Okay, and we're in a similar position. My last move, so just chilling out here. Okay, when you're ready, breathe in, switch on the core. As you do that, squeeze the glutes, tilt the pelvis to start with, push the knees away, and slowly peel the spine. We're not going to do loads of these particularly, I just want you to get this sensation of keeping the legs tracking. So you're going back through neutral each time, press the knees away, push the glutes up, hips up towards the ceiling, and then allow the vertebrae to drop down one by one by one. Going back to neutral in the spine. If you'd like to, each time that you come back to the bottom, feel free to just take a second to reset. Okay, you can if you wish use your breathing to time you. Sometimes that's good, sometimes it's a bit distracting, but if you breathe out, to roll up and breathe in, to come back down. So it's just an option. In an ideal world, it'd all be easy peasy when I'm going to think about it. But actually, there's quite a lot to think about. So I'm trying to think about holding that knee position tracking as it's rolling up that spine. Press. Just going to do a couple more. Like I said, not loads of these tonight. I just wanted to give you that sensation with the cushion or the ball. Last one, last one, last one. Just squeeze those glutes, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Push the knees away. Okay, lovely. Okay, release that there. Right, if you have the ball, keep the ball. I'm going to draw one leg in so that we can roll up to sitting. We're rolling up, rolling up. Oh gosh. I have lights that I look into when I line them about. I tell you, I'm blind as a bat now. I've got all that flashing. <laughs> and I don't even have my glasses on anyway. I can't see anything. Right, we're going to do some rolling up. If you want to, that ball underneath the back. To get in the neutral position to start with, if, if you find it tricky to get your hips neutral, you sit on your Pilates ball or cushion, just roll off the front, and that can help just tilt the pelvis under, okay? So start in that neutral position. I'm going to ease that ball just a few inches behind me here. So we're sitting up nice and tall. The spine is long neutral curve in the lower part of the back and if you want to you can 
just grab onto the back of your legs if that's what you think you need to do, just to keep you in a great position. So from here, shoulders down and relaxed, just breathe. Breathe in, switch on the core as you breathe out. Start that roll down. Now the benefit of having the ball there, oh, it was about to fling out, it wasn't going to work. It's just to hold you so that you know when you get there. <laughs> wasn't going to work. Oh, it's slipping. So I'm starting this move gradually. It's tucking the pelvis like we did on the shoulder bridge. You tuck under and gradually go up. Now, if you're really comfy with this, you're strong in this position, you've got that curved spine, and actually the ball is getting quite distracting now because it keeps going further every time. I'm going to get rid. Okay. It's the strength into the abs. So you're going down. And if you want to, you can extend all the way. Or bringing back up, rolling up through the spine, curve, curve, curve. And bringing it down. So it's a long, 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 long move. Okay. And this may or may not feel great for you. What we want to avoid is needing to hitch on the way back up, so this should be under the strength of the abdominals. You may want to keep the legs further in, or you may prefer to have the legs a little bit further out, you might like to have them long. There's a few choices here. So whilst they're long, they don't necessarily need to be locked out. But it gives you a slightly different sensation. Gosh, I can feel all the water in my tummy wobbling around. <laughs> Obviously, too much to drink with there. It's very good. Right, and just a couple more because you may be sticking with a slightly smaller move, which is absolutely fine. So it's the roll down, rolling up. Coming back through to that neutral position, sitting up nice and tall. Wonderful. We're going to come over onto the other side. We've still got those clams with the um, chalk circles. So I'll grab my head pad. I don't need the ball right now. I will be wanting in a moment my uh, straps. I will leave it within the grass. Oh, actually, I'm going to move that so I don't want to do what I'm doing with chalk circles. There we go. All sorted now, all sorted. Right. So getting in that neutral position, knees in front of hips and paws below. So, we're in this relaxed position, the hip, top hip is pushing away, there's a small gap underneath the waist, the spine is nice and long and it's kind of flat in this direction, we've got the neutral curve going down the spine that we would normally like. The ankles, knees and hips are stacked, we've got this comfortable position when you're ready, breathe in, switch on the core as you breathe out. Take that arm round. So again, we're going to do sets of three. And again, it's optional whether you wish to do just the upper body, just the lower body, a mixture, whatever you fancy, really. Okay, so I think I've done three. Ready? <laughs> it's going to open and close. Two. So we're working into that outer part of the thigh. Really, not allowing those hips to roll back. So in both of these moves, the aim is to keep those hips stacked. So it's a rotation around the spine. It's not the hips rolling. It's the arm and shoulder taking the upper body with it, taking the chest across. Might feel a bit, a little bit different to you on this side. Maybe this side's more comfy, less comfy. It just depends. And maybe it feels, both feel good, which would be good. Squeeze. Please keep those shoulder blades drawn down the back. This time, I'm just going to hold it open just for a few seconds. Keep it there. So just relax into it. Allow that back shoulder blade to open down towards the floor. And just get heavy. Try to keep the hips nicely stepped. Keep that top hip pushed away. So it's still that little straw gap under the waist. Okay, I'll continue round. Okay. And three clams. Or not. Both options. 
is available. Squeeze. lower body again this is my little time to just check in on the position of the hips check in on the position of the spine we're going to do one more set here one more set so for those of you watching on monday or tuesday morning don't forget to pancake night tuesday night I hope you've got something exciting planned, be it lemon, sugar, chocolates, sprinkles, jam, I don't know, what do people have on pancakes? I do hope you've got something planned. And relax, release. Okay, we're going to do a few hip rolls. So if you get rid of your cushions lying on your back, I'm going to take the feet up and slightly wider than the hips. I'm just going to roll side to side. Stretch. This is why I wanted you to have your band or your belt tonight. If you've got one, if you don't, don't panic. You can just hold behind the back of the leg. But I do really myself enjoy having a hamstring stretch with a belt. It feels so good. Okay. So I like to just wrap my hands around. And I've got a belt that's long enough that I can pretty much keep my elbows down. So I've got a straight leg up towards the ceiling. And actually this time I will say you can knock it out. It's okay, you want that leg straight for a hamstring stretch. And draw the other leg down towards the floor. The reason you do that is just to pin the hips down. The temptation is when the knee is up, you're almost, that lower body is kind of creeping up, isn't it? So you take the other leg away to keep the hips down and level. Shoulder blades still drawn down the back. And just hold that stretch and hopefully that feels fantastic around the back of your leg. And we're going to make this quite a long stretch tonight to allow us to possibly increase ever so slightly our range of movements. So on your next pull and my breath in, breathe in, and as you breathe out if you can, just ease it, smidgy, smidgy, smidgy closer. Oh, it feels so good. Obviously, if it doesn't feel good, don't do it, but it does feel good to me. Really good. Love a hamstring stretch. Switch sides, so just bending at the knee. Just going to get a belt around the other foot and get into position first. So straight leg pointing up, and when you're ready, the other leg extends down. So, I guess my recipe request this week, should you still have any, is something fun for the pancakes. I'm a big fan myself, I don't know if you've ever had them, but protein pancakes are amazing. If you have protein shake, I think it's protein shake, blended oats. Uh, an egg and I think that's everything and you can make them into pancakes and oh my goodness they're delicious you can google a recipe I'm sure but they're so good okay and your next one of my breath in breathe in and as you breathe out just ease it closer so any other good pancake recipes I would love to hear that'd be amazing And, and release. And I'm going to get rid of that band without letting it hit me in the face. Awesome. Okay, just coming up to a sitting position. So hold on to one knee, draw yourself to sitting up. Okay. And we're going to have that chest stretch. So feet down and squeeze the shoulder blades together. Open the chest up towards the ceiling. Looking up, you've got a long front of the body, chest, squeeze the shoulder blades together. You might find, some people this might be comfy, maybe crossing your legs. And squeeze the hands together at the back, that's also an option, okay? I just quite like that position where you're looking up as well, it gives me a little bit extra on the stretch, which is lovely. Okay. And release that here. You're going to take ankle 
one foot over the opposite leg. So you can keep one leg straight, other leg bent. I'm going to take shoulder in towards the knee, so I'm twisting across myself. Hanging on with the leg, take the hand behind, long spine, pushing down with the palm, and using this arm that's holding onto the leg just to pull across, to twist that chest across. You're getting a beautiful twist for the spine, and it is a twist around the long spine as always. So instead of any slumping, we're sitting up lovely and tall. Okay, and release that. We're going to switch sides. So let the other leg come out, bend in, ankle goes over, holding on and twist. Now you might find you can't get your arm quite as far over that spine. If you're using your hands to pull round, that's fine. You might want to really push that chest all the way. Maybe you can take the arm over the top if you're really flexible. I'm not always great at doing that, but you might be able to get it right over. You're getting a stretch as well down the side of the kind of hips as well. What a lovely twist. Okay. And release that. I'm just going to roll over onto all fours. Coming down, knees under hips, hands under shoulders. Couple of rounds of cat and cow. We've not done this tonight, have we? Oh my goodness. What am I doing next week? I'll try and put it on the to-do list for next week. Oh, big stretch, big stretch. Okay, and then tuck the toes, push the body weights backwards, straighten up through the legs, and slowly, slowly, slowly rolling up through the spine. And have a little shoulder stretch while we're here, a bit of a change. So standing up neutral, take the arm across, just bring that shoulder in towards the body, so I'm holding either above or below the elbow joint, let the shoulder drop down to the side. So rather than having it up by the ear, it's still relaxed down the side. And switch sides. Okay. And just a couple of big breaths in. Oh man, that was good. I hope you enjoyed those balances. They were a bit fun, weren't they? And one more. Okay. Have a wonderful, wonderful week. I hope you enjoy or have enjoyed Pancake Day. Uh, with whatever toppings you've gone for. Um, give me a like, give me a share, send me a message. I love it all. Um, it's fantastic to know that there's somebody on the other side of that screen. <laughs> okay. And otherwise, I do hope I see you again very, very soon indeed. Have a great week. Okay. Take care and bye-bye.